Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, so we're trying something different tonight. Um, so give us some feedback, right? We're kind of skipping that two-minute intro reel. Um, I guess it just makes it a little bit better for those watching on replay. Uh, so yeah, give, give us some feedback. You know, do you prefer the intro reel? Uh, do you not? Um, I think what a lot of successful or the bigger kind of shows and podcasts do is they kind of have a 30-second kind of live thing like this, and then they go into a uh, maybe 30 second pre-recorded uh, kind of intro reel. So yeah, keen on you guys' feedback on that. You know, we're kind of early days and just trying to make this thing better. Uh, welcome to tonight's show. We did a little bit of crowdsourcing on this one, put up a poll in one of the uh, uh, New Zealand small business owners forum and ideas and networking uh, Facebook group um, in terms of what topics they wanted to hit tonight. And we landed on sales process, thanks to Dion Campbell. Uh, I hope you're tuning in. Um, if you did vote on the poll and you do want to hear about it. Um, I guess just to frame things up a little bit, um, so we probably hit a couple of things today. Um, one, I kind of want to kind of frame up where sales and sales process kind of fit in to the business. I think a lot of the businesses that kind of are in this group and, and voted on the poll, um, I kind of on the, uh, I would say, earlier stage of things, you know, still um, and, refining and the sales process, around, things you know, to be on Campbell. Uh, marketing process, leadership process, recruitment, uh, performance management. So a lot of process strategy, refining that market fit. So pretty early stage, you know, maybe, I don't know, going a couple of years or just at a uh, 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 quite a smaller level of uh, revenue um, or team size. Uh, so I kind of wanted to frame things up um, around sales. I want to give you guys a sales process. Uh, I think we've got a download um, too because um, we've uh, developed a bit of a, a framework uh, or a sales conversation guide, uh, if you like. Um, and then probably just jam. We want to try and keep it tight um, tonight. Uh, you know, I think there's definitely value in, in having a conversation. Uh, as opposed to, you know, those like three top things or five tips um, and all that kind of stuff. You'll probably see a cursor flying around because Nick's doing sharing um, while I'm doing this intro and stuff like that. And then we're going to say, what's up to us? Uh, if you are tuned in, uh, say what's up in the comments. I'm really um, quite interested in, um, you know, how is business going? And wow, yeah, okay, we've got some viewers. Oh, Daniel, here we go. What's up, Daniel? What's up, Kevin Rush? Uh, and you know, also your guys' thoughts, right? Every week, we want this to be a conversation. We want this to be inclusive. So, you know, um, tell us what your experience with sales is. Tell us any solutions that you have, any problems that you have with sales. Uh, because I guess towards the end of it, you know, we'll try and um, do, be a bit more interactive and do some Q&A and kind of stuff. Uh, who's uh, tuned in there, Nick? I'll do some sharing. Uh, what's up? Uh, Tim, g'day. How are you, mate? Good to see you on. Corey, hey, Corey, how are you, mate? Um, good to have you on, too. Cool. Um, we had a quick chat this afternoon. And, uh, yeah, so a little bit of a different setup tonight going with um, <clears throat> straight into the content. So um, Dylan's just going to do some sharing real quick, but we're uh, we're pretty excited to bring this one together. Um, developing your sales process is a... Um, it's a pretty big topic and we really want to punch out the values as, as, as much as we can to you guys tonight but it is this is interactive so if you are if you are jumping on let's hear from uh, you how, how do you do your sales do you have a particular process um, you know uh, is there are you a, cons a consultative type process are you a um, you know you're completely online what is what is the process how, how do you once you've got a lead what is your strategy for converting it uh, Sep, what's up? How are you, mate? Good to see you on. Yeah, and Tim, hey Tim, oh, hey Tim, we're just seeing Tim. Hey Tim, I'm really glad that you uh, hooked up, got hooked up with Alex, mate, and ended up. Um, t uh, Tim posted on his um, somewhere that he was looking for a car, and I hooked him up with Alex, who um, works out at uh, Hyundai West Auckland, and uh, he hooked him up with a brand new car. So that's that's pretty cool. So that's, that's a just a little bit of a win. So awesome. Hi, <clears throat> right, bruv, you ready to go? Yeah, cool. Love networking, love networking. Hey, uh, one of the mates um, owns Renault. Actually, if you need a Renault, uh, yeah, yeah, go see Sean Moses down at our Renault Green Lane too. I'll give him a play. Okay, cool. Um, hey, and by the way, Tim, right, you know sales, Tim. So glad to see you here. Um, feel free to chime in. Um, we'll try and pick up um, all of your comments uh, that you want to kind of throw in. Um, so definitely do that. So again, you know, first thing I wanted to do is kind of frame up sales and you guys get a whiteboard because um, I know you guys love whiteboards, but don't worry, it's not death by PowerPoint. Um, oh, there's a beautiful picture that my daughter drew. So I just wanted to kind of give us some, give us some framing, um, you know, for the conversation because, you know, if I'm honest, man, <clears throat> if you ask, you know, you ask someone with the flu, say, hey, wh hey, what do you need? And, you know, they say antibiotics and 
that tells you something about that person and stuff like that. And that, if I'm honest, man, that's kind of how I feel about tonight. It's like, hey, what's the biggest problem in your business? Oh, I don't make enough money. That's the biggest problem in your business, you know, or I don't have enough leads or I don't have a strong enough sales process. Um, don't get me wrong, it's really, really important, but I just want to give it some framing so that we, and so you guys get a nice, lovely shadow as you do. Oh, am I kind of here, Nick? No, you're all right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's Is that the top of my screen? You can go a touch higher than that. Okay, cool. So look, just wanted to draw a quick diagram, right? First, your, your, your business kind of starts off with goals, right? And um, you might call those vision, mission, and purpose. You know, and they're kind of future states, their targets, their goals, right? Um, and then ideally, you know, it, it comes into um, a mutually beneficial relationship between your avatar or your target market uh, and your strategy. <clears throat> so we deliver value to a market uh, and then, you know, they deliver us value back, right? And so just follow, a quick follow, little diagram. Follow that way, touch a touch. A bit more yep yeah right cool and then um obviously you know underneath that you kind of have the team they kind of deliver on that um so we'll call it culture and so you've got all of your um you know your various departments finance sales marketing uh operation legal you know all that kind of stuff so i just wanted to draw this because <clears throat> People say they've got a sales problem, you know, and the good sales process. So Dion, if you're watching, no, is, is Dion on here? I haven't seen him jump in yet, no. Um, oh, okay, cool. Trouble, Look, and Tim, you might know this too, right? So, you know, what? actually, Tim, I'll ask you a question. Yeah, or anyone on here, right? So when you, when you are looking to review the sales process or optimize the sales uh, process or conversion rates in the, in the business, you know, what's the, what's the first thing you kind of go to? And if, if, if I'm honest, right, and I've had lots of sales training, deliver a little bit of sales training myself, you know, you, you generally kind of go back to avatar. Are you nailing your avatar, right? Because we're going we're gonna to give you a sales process to kind of work through. And Nick, I mean, you know sales, right, in and out. So Nick's probably got 20, lots of 20 years at least, mate. Actually, <laughs> right, to so, be fair, I did start selling when I was eight. I was knocking on doors, selling eggs door to door, and I was older than I was eight. Yeah, so that's 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 how that's how far back it goes. Door to door, hey, even this is what's going on, man. I bloody had to go Shit. and clean the chicken house out and collect the cartons. I go and collect the cartons from down the dairy that had the empty ones, and then I'd fill them up and go sell them. It was good. Very much Gary V. Stealing flowers out of someone's garden and then selling them back to themselves, right? Um, hey Dion, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey Dion, here's the question for you, brother. Um, where would you start when you first approach an organization? Where would you start in terms of helping them to optimize their sales process? Thanks for the uh, topic tonight, by the way, Dion. I um, mean, I know you've got a lot to say about this, right? So the thing I will say about sales process is that, you know, Dion is like a sales player. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm totally aware that, you know, we might be, um, I don't know, uh, rugby players. Um, and, you know, yeah, there's a lot of transferable skills over here, but Dion is living and breathing sales every day. So, you know, jump in here, Dion, where would you start? I'm going to say, you know, typically you want to start around the avatar because you've got to get all the tone right um, and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you've got to go into a strategy. Is my product right? Have I got market fit right? What are the leads that are coming into sales by my marketing pipeline, right? So there's a bit of a pipeline between marketing and sales. <clears throat> you know, have we, have we set the right platform for sales to have a constructive conversation off? You know, so for, and that's what I mean. So for people to kind of say, hey, look, sales is my problem. You know, either one, you've got all these other boxes ticked or two, you're kind of scratching at symptoms and we're not actually looking at causes, mm, 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 mm. right? That's and, the antibiotics that's, comment, right? That's the antibiotics comment, you know? Uh, so yeah, that, that being said, I just, yeah, kind of want to frame that up before we jump into, like, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you guys through a process here. Um, do you want to add anything? Um, yeah, look. I, I, 20 years experience, bro. What, what yeah, do you look, say and what um, don't you say? Um, so so from, a, from a sales perspective, you know, number one, hey, we've got to make sure, and, and, and it's going to echo what you're saying, we've got to make sure that it's a lead, it's not a leads problem. So sales sales is the conversion part of marketing. And, you know, um, it could very well be that you've actually, um, your problem has nothing to do with sales itself and everything to do with not enough leads. Or, you know, and this happened in, 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 um, in my business in the past, is we had so many leads our strategy for converting them was 
it was archaic. We just had too many leads coming in. So that's also a problem that you can get. So I think the key for, for this talk is about, about making sure you've properly identified the problem before you try to throw the strategy, the antibiotics, at the problem because otherwise, you, you know, you very much might put yourself into a position of um, fixing the wrong thing within the business. Yeah. So Yeah, um, 100 million percent. So anyone who's watching who has got a comment on that, um, jump in, share it. Um, yeah, I'll grab Tim's. Yep, yep, you go. <clears throat> so I love Tim's comment, you know, and, and that's what I will say. The other thing I'll say about sales training, and again, thanks for the topic, Dion, but it's, it's actually quite situational, uh, right? And, and so Tim's comment is, your perfect client avatar, which is this piece, right? Mm -hmm. Real high-level stuff um, is you, right? We attract who we are. But I think the most important distinction to remember at the beginning of any sales process is not to be attached to the outcome, be attached to giving value. So I, I love that comment, Tim, you're 100% right. And that's what I mean is, is there's so much that goes into the sales process, like we don't have enough time, right? You could talk about this for days and days and days. So we're only gonna get to cover what we want, uh, what we managed to cover and squeeze into this time. Um, those concepts, I'll pick up on those, yeah. In terms of the avatar, Tim, you know, but I think that's also dependent on the industry that you're in. It's also dependent on the business model that you're running. It depends on the product that you're offering. It depends on how you're doing your marketing. Basically, it depends, but, mate. It depends. So, right, and again, that's what I mean. So, a sales process, it, it, it needs to vary. It's like saying one diet works for everyone. Yeah, you know, and it just, it just doesn't, man. So, look, but I do agree with you. Like, generally, especially in our type of businesses, like, so, um, Tim's a really successful, you know, real estate agent. He does some really cool marketing. Um, if, you, if you don't know Tim, we've just, you know, he's, he's commented down below, click on his stuff and check out his marketing, right? And that's how he's bringing leads in or people mm. in to have a sales conversation with. Um, and yeah, you're right. And that's the cool thing, right? And the other thing I think I'll add to that, Tim, right, is the more we are ourselves, the more we have a unique value proposition or a unique selling point. Um, and then when we do attract, uh, you know, people that are like us, uh, you know, again, there's that, just that more uh, higher bandwidth. But I think the most important distinction is to remember is, yeah, don't get attached to the outcome. So that's what I will say about sales, right? That's a fucking common fuck up is that everyone wants to try and be a car salesman, right? They're trying to convince, like, sell me this pen, you, you know? And they're like, oh, it's, it's shiny, it's green. If you buy it now, it's, it's only 99 cents. It's usually $2. Uh, you know, call the 0800 number. There's only 20 of them left. So all the scarcity... Uh, you know, really coercive kind of... Um, yeah, cl all the different strategies for closing and all the rest of it too, right? Closing and shit like that, right? And so um, his, his last piece of his comment was uh, be attached to giving value. And look, I 100% agree with that. Do you want to have you... Do you want to run through like some, kind of some general... Um, or I will... Some general to-dos as opposed well, to not well, to-dos. I'm going to say, look, uh, because we're talking sales process, let's assume for the most part that they've done this avatar strategy piece. And then we're talking to the ones that really are struggling with sales. And we want to hear from you guys that, are, that you know, if this is a real challenge and there was, I don't know, 10 or 12 responses that that, that was the challenge, developing a sales process. Because, you know, um, we are just talking in the agreement before we started, like, you know, we got to a million dollars in revenue before I even defined the sales process. Um, so, so having a, a defined process, it freaking helps, but it's not everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, you, let's just be sure that that's the problem. If that's the problem, man, let's get stuck in. I, I'm keen. Let's hear the nuts and bolts, bro. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. So yeah, I'll start with to do's. Oh, no, maybe go, not to do's or to do's. Let's do not to do's, right? Don't be a cheesy car salesman. You don't like it. I, most of us are uncomfortable with it anyway. Mm, mm. Don't try and trick people into things. Don't try and take on clients that you, you, that you don't like. Right, like that's just crazy. You're setting yourself up for this crazy life where you're committing to some kind of partnership or serious relationship with the clients that you don't like, right? Whether it's a certain values thing, maybe it's a religion, I don't know what it is, you know what I mean? But um, uh, yeah, don't do that. And don't, yeah, don't force people into shit, man. It's just stupid. Um, to do's. I think, you know, start with empathy. And again, that comes right up here. You know, start, do your business because you love it. De develop your products and services that you want to offer the market because you love them, mm. you know, and then love the target market or the segment of the market that you intend to help, you know. So Tim, um, as an example, is a, uh, you know, real estate agent, probably helping sellers or uh, vendors, you know, to sell their house so they can free up some capital and kind of move on to the next thing and helping buyers get into, the, you know, maybe their first home or, or whatever that is or their investment property. Right. You know, so love those people. You know, no, out of the, like Tim says, out of the 100 people, are you going to love them all? 
uh, no, but the ones that you do do that you have an affinity towards or a commonality towards shared values, common values, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I love the shit out of them. And so just try to help. You know, and you don't try to help someone by saying, yeah, you've got to buy it now. It's green, it's shiny, it's on sale today, and there's only one of them left. Um, you know, you kind of give them some education, ask them, right? And this is where we get consultative. Ask them account, kind of what their buying criteria is. Uh, is. You know, this is where we come back to persona work or avatar work. What are their buying motives? You know, what's the actual problem that they're trying to solve? And then at the end of that sales conversation, it should be a really quick kind of, hey, well, this might be able to help you. Yeah, I mean, it should be a no-brainer to actually get the sale, right? Yeah, right. Um, hey, so just a couple of comments come through so um sep he's just said you look totally uh, trust trust it seems like the key word especially on those that um which the client is purchasing something that i understand and they trust your recommendation and i think that that um and, and it totally echoes what dion's saying here is that the sales process starts with the understanding of who you're selling to because if you understand who you're selling to then you know that that trust will be built even though they may not know everything about your product and a great example is like how many times do you go and buy something like a I mean, I've got a, you know, a cell phone. I don't know how the thing works. I just know that it works, you know, and, and I don't know how the internal blah, blah, blahs of it work, but I know that it's going to do the job. Um, and that's where, where I think, you know, we re you really want to get to with understanding who you're selling to so that when you make a recommendation, you're not making it because you want to make a sale, but you're making it because it's going to improve their life. 100 million percent. And that's just being a good cat, right? And that's what I mean. It's avatar. So know who you're selling to. Avatar, persona, niche, whatever the fuck. And so, like, I 100% agree with Dion. Well done. Yeah, and the last one was um, from Corey. He just said, if your avatar is super clear and your message resonates with that group, it gets them responding and gets them excited. That's about half the battle. And, you know, 100% um, with, um, with with, with, with the, the, the day job that I'm doing right now, um, you know, we've had a really, really good partnership with one particular retailer. And w we've actually been creating television ads around the product with our personality. Um, and basically the way we see it is that by the time that customer gets to the store, we should have done enough work that the salesperson really just needs to make a, a, an explanation and close the sale. They're not having to go through and actually do any selling because we've done, we've done the work prior to the customer coming. They're already educated. They already know what it is that we sell. And it's just about us having a conversation about, is this the right thing for you? Let's do it. And, and, and actually asking for the money. I think that's one of the biggest, biggest yeah, look, I, in sales, right? I agree. And yeah, yeah. And so again, we're kind of coming out of the sales process, right? Because I agree, man, if you've got your avatar, right, which is kind of what all those comments just said, mm. you know who you're selling to, which is another way of kind of saying persona or avatar. And then if you've got enough, if your marketing is right, your messaging is on, your avatar is right, your messaging is on, it, there's a saying in, um, you know, sales that goes, um, um, oh, you know, no one sells an iPhone. Mm. By the time you turn up to the place, you know, or call up or click the button or whatever to buy the iPhone, you already bought it. So that person is not even really a salesperson, um, more of a customer service, auto taking kind of person. You know, they almost, you know, they can almost be have a different kind of personality where mm. salespeople are kind of generally extroverted. This person could be totally introverted. Hi, how can I help you? Okay, cool. Do you want that in 64 gigs or 128 black, gold, whatever? I'll take it. Right. And so again, like <clears throat> Yeah, again, as long as we're not saying that, hey, sales is going to solve my thing, um, you know, because you've ticked these other boxes, then I think, yeah, we're good. Uh, sales process? Yeah, so let's hit that process part, that, that actually developing, the creating the process that we, um, do, do you want to use an example here? How, how do you want to hit that? Good question, good question. Um, so where I will, yeah, what I will say, you know, generally on products business, I think marketing, marketing helps you a lot in the sales um conversation um but i think you know dion's got a lot of experience around kind of selling you know somewhat sophisticated products and services um so that's where the sales combo um um will, will be uh, very very important uh i'm just going to run through an example of just how to frame it up um yeah look so first is, is start with your mindset right and the mindset is uh first you want to be present you want you, you know you want to turn off all your distractions you want to even you know five ten minutes before you go into this conversation um, again, especially if you're like selling high ticket items. Um, probably the second thing is you want to go into it with the mindset of being a doctor. You know, I think sometimes we kind of go and approach it from a mindset of kind of being the performer, like we're on like what's that X Factor or Dancing Monkeys. Or, 
dancing monkeys, right? And we're like, okay, cool, man, this is such an important deal. I've got to go in here. I've got to have a kick-ass presentation, you know? I've got to show them how awesome we are and all that kind of shit. And um, again, that's telling selling. That's, that's coercive selling. That's manipulative, exploitive kind of selling, generally kind of speaking. Uh, whereas generally kind of speaking, yeah, just go in and consult, right? So the example is when you go into a doctor, right? Like what do they sell you, right? And they end up, they, how many sales are they close? 90% of all their sales. <laughs> sell you right? and, um, so, and that's a perfect example of like, but you know, in the method that they used to get there, really ask a shitload of questions. Yeah, yeah. The, for the first kind of two thirds, you know, maybe three quarters of the sales consultation. So the other thing, be a doctor, be consultative. Yeah, no, I, I don't go that like 100% and in a sales conversation, that early phase, I'm going to assume that you are smart enough to be able to get rapport with someone. You're not going to have to, I don't want to teach you fucking body language. That's like day one shit, man. Like if you, if you can't smile and be nice to someone, I mean, but you're not going to make it in sales. But if you, if you can, you know, in that process, start to understand and it's not about getting to know them. Oh, you know, have you got kids and what's your blah, blah, blah. It's about getting to know what their challenge is and what the, you know, what it is that they want solved, yeah. right? Yeah. And we, I talked yeah. about this the other day, you know, um, people will say, oh, you know, when so-and-so goes in to buy, you know, a drill, but he doesn't actually want to drill, you know, he wants a hole. And, and I say, no, I disagree with that. He doesn't want a hole. He wants to put a painting on the fucking wall, right? Yeah. And, 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 and discovering that he wants a hole hasn't actually – Done, done the consult consultative process right in the first place. So you've really got to nail that. Once you know that this person is actually a prospect and potential for your business, you've got to nail their needs. If you get that, closing is it's a no-brainer. Agreed, agreed. We're going to come back to Tim's um, topic. Yeah, so you want to be the doctor, you want to be consultative. And then, yeah, you want to understand their problem, right? And and to go, show, you, show you guys, because this is what we can do in this time, right? Is we can give you some concepts, man. And then again, like if you want the download um, of a question set, um, and it's a structure. It's not a script, it's a structure. Um, just hit us down in the comments or hit us in our inbox. Yeah, I got um, oodles, and say, oodles of collateral too for sales, man. Just, just jump in the DMs and hit us, yeah. Yeah, say some sales collateral, please, and we'll give you some, right? But again, this is such a um, personal thing. Um, that you need to you need to personalize it to you first of all, and then again to your avatar, very very close second um, mm. um, to that. Right. So yeah, be consultative, and, and just to kind of highlight the, or emphasize the power of that. And Tim, you know, jump in here too. Oh yeah, we've got to come back to Tim's comment. But um, or oh, Dion, jump in. Um, you know, so yeah, you go to a brain surgeon, you got a brain problem, you know, you, and uh... they start. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, uh... <laughs> they can't fix me, bro. <laughs> I've been to lots. Um, they gave up, um, you know, and, and and they start asking, okay, cool, you know, do you get headaches? Do you have visual problem with your vision? Problem with your sound? You know, how's it affecting you? They're asking you a whole lot of questands, right? And they're understanding pain level, pain levels, all that kind of stuff. And then what they're doing there is they're building that you know, like and trust. They're building rapport, you know. And they're not asking about, oh, hey, how's your mother's, father's, dog's, cat walk up? you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're, they're really specific to, again, the pain point that the avatar has um, coming into this. Versus, you know, you get in there and they're like, oh, how's your knee? You, you know, uh, how's your digestion? Or, you, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. When was your last course of antibiotics? Um, and, and so the opposite is true too, right? Or, hey, you know what you need, mate? Look, you got a brain problem. Um, you, you, you need to go and suck on this lollipop for like two hours a day. And, and no, look, you just need to do it because it's shiny. Um, it's usually two dollars, but it's only ninety nine cents today, and there's only two of these left. You know, and they just and, and you know straight away we just feel put off, man. We're so cynical um, as a, as a society now that that yeah, telling I mean, selling, I, yeah, I really don't think it works. into us that shit, man. From from when we're kids, you know, you walk into a store with your mum or your dad, and the salesperson goes up and goes, "Can I help you, sir?" And they go, "No, thanks, just looking." Right. What the fuck are you looking for? <laughs> right. Oh, and then you know, social media doesn't help because it's just spam, right. spam, right. spam, right. spam. Right. Um, yeah, right. And their touch points have gone from 14 to 21 in like two years. So um, yeah, so you know, that's the power of asking and asking the right questions. So, yeah, so I think um, from a developing developing developmental phase of a sales process. 
is as you start to develop it, you need to know these questions. You need to write them down. You need to script them out. You need to make sure that you know um, you when you when you make a sale, break deconstruct it. Deconstruct it. What went well? Went wrong? What could have went better? What were your opportunities? What did you not do? What did what could have you done better? That kind of stuff will actually help you to develop that process so much faster. Hundred million percent. Hundred million percent. Fuck, I want to share screen. But um, yeah, look, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit some um. Yeah, so you want to take the lead. You want to frame up the conversation. You know, tell them that you're going to understand their requirements. Uh, you know, you want to take notes. You want to understand what the current situation is. Here's another framework, right? You want to understand where the current situation is, what their desired situation is. And then that's where your product or service comes in, is you'll take them from where they are. I want to buy a nice, fast red car, right? Which is their desired situation. And your product or service is mm. going to help them achieve that goal, mm. right? Meet their pain point, meet their requirements. Uh, yeah, there's, look, there's a whole bunch of questions, but I think, yeah, people just need to download this thing, right? Then we want to ask, um, you know, what's holding them back? What's holding them back from getting that? Because we want to remove those. We want to ask them, you know, what are they, what's their uh, ability to access that solution? Do you have a budget? Do you have a timeline? You know, do you want to buy that car in the next six months or in the next, you know, today? Mm, mm, in the next mm. six days. Um, all that yeah, kind of I stuff, because that's going to affect our, our pitch, so to speak, right? You yeah, I mean? uh, just just on that, there's some really good questions you can ask uh, when you've gone through that identification process and you know that you've got the solution. And before you start spilling the features and the benefits of the solution, um, which is, is a real, um, what do they call it? Verbal diarrhea. <laughs> it's a real yeah, 100%. Um, easy. And, and, and the, fuck, I hate it when salespeople do that and they just start blabbing and blabbing and blabbing. I'm like, mate, I don't care. I just also, what you need to do, you need to say to your customer, Great. I think I've got the solution to your problem. Now, if we could solve your problem, when would you want to get that problem solved? Right. Qualification. Now I've got a timeline. Okay, great. Now, um, now that we know that you want this problem solved in this time frame, are you the one that makes the decision on whether or not this, you go ahead for having this problem solved? Yes or no? Oh, yeah. Well, I've got to talk to my wife because that's gonna, you know, it's gonna cut that out. The third question you want to ask them is, do you have a budget? For solving and implementing this problem, you know, for fixing this problem. Yes, you do. Great. So when should we get started? If you can ask those questions and that, there's your sales process. Hundred million percent. So that's a sales conversation process, right? Mm -hmm. But then I think Dion's going to talk about, um, you know, also, you know, your follow up, your CRM work, uh, you know, your nurturing emails, your nurturing conversations, you know, because yeah, B two B or B to corporate. Dude, man, you're looking at kind of average six to nine month sales cycles. Mm, 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 you, you know, and right. so again, that, that, that's quite different again. You know, and I agree with. Um, let's jump. I'll jump on a couple of comments. You jump on a term, and I'm going to jump on a Dion's one. Okay, cool. Well, I'll just um, Marilyn's is quick. You need to listen to your clients. I agree. There's a saying in sales, right, Marilyn? Um, you've got two ears and one mouth. Use them in proportion. Um, I, I even think that's even further. I think you, you, you know, sales conversation or consultation. You know, we should only probably be talking like. 25, maybe 20% 20 of the time. Okay, cool. So Tim says, I think we've entered a new realm in sales where agenda is out and authenticity is in 100%. And I think we'll all agree that social media has had a um, uh, large influence is bringing in that authenticity. People want to see people now, you know, on websites. If you don't have people on your page, what do you on your page? Um, it's just a, the audience connect a lot less with it. Alex didn't sell me my new Hyundai. I bought it. Yep. Very nice, Tim. Very fucking nice, right? I didn't even haggle. He told me up front that that was his process and he was true to his word. His aura matched his mouth, meaning he spoke his truth to me. Mm. I was his focus authentically and strictly, but in a very relaxed way, which for me was a lovely experience. I learned a lot from Alex. 100%. Thanks, Tim. That, that, that's a good comment, man. You know, and just an example of kind of how it's not even sales process. Like, you know, with all due respect, again, Nick was at retail selling what? Average $500,000 yeah. uh, average um, sale? Yeah. Uh, look, Ish. Like yeah, it wasn't look, 10, I've, I've, I've done sales where we've had $200 ASPs, um, $1,500 ASPs, um, $3,000 ASPs. And, and, and anywhere in between so 
generally speaking, $300 and below um, from a decision-making making process is a much faster process and a, and a, uh, a quicker to happen um, process. And obviously, the higher the ASP, uh, the more um, assistance you're going to get. Yeah, 100 million percent, right? And again, process didn't come until a million dollars, right? So I don't know, I don't know, out of out of everyone who's kind of tuned in, how many of you guys are at a million dollar sales? You know, if we're at a hundred thousand and we're trying to work on sales process, there's an argument that it's kind of it's maybe not the right lever to be pulling in your business right now, you know. But if you are, um, or if you just need to tweak it, you know, don't get me wrong. Okay, you want to jump on someone's comment, yeah, Dion's right? Gonna, like Dion's just been uh, hitting a whole bunch here, and, and I'm going to summate them. But basically, he's talking about. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's running through his process here. But look. Um, and it's going to echo pretty much what we've said. But number one is, you know, it's your attitude, it's your the way you present, um, you know, the, the way you communicate. And, and for sure, that's fundamentals. That's day one. You, you know, you can't sell if you can't look at someone in the eyes. You can't um, sell if you can't, you know, communicate well with someone if you've got BO, all of that stuff. So, you know, he's, uh, number two, greeting. So, you know, how do you greet someone and, and have a process for that? Have a consistent um process and work on that getting um getting rapport with the customer which is again like you know it's people people buy from people they like they don't buy from people that um you know if you don't like someone you ain't going to give them your money that's just just the way it is uh fact finding which is we just talked about with discovery you know consultation so 100 percent getting to know what it is that they want um and then appraisal or which is you know um you know um assessment of needs uh, i think is a similar similar strategy what he's talking about there no trade needs analysis yep, yeah yep um selection so he's talking about product fit now product fit and obviously i think um selection is this i think that works both ways is this customer a good fit for our brand um you know you don't want to you mentioned at the start you don't want to sell someone who's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with um and or a drug dealer or donald <laughs> trump or you know whoever <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we don't you know, we don't want to sell to everyone. That's we've got to accept that. The sooner we accept that, the better. Yep. And then he's talking about demonstration, which is you build value in the product. Um, you talk about the features and benefits and, and again it's just it's just a it's a, um helping them to understand what it is that they're buying. And then a close, trial yeah. trial close, you know, um, <coughs> you know, test the buyer if they're ready. And that's that's what it's talking about. Framing those questions. Hey, are you the one that makes the decision? Have you got a budget to do it? Okay, great. And if you were going to have this problem solved, when would you want it solved? And then, um, you know, service, walk this, walk this at time, but, you know, uh, to them after the sale. Uh, service after sale. So he's talking about after the, after you've tested, do they want to buy it? This is how we look after you after you after you become our customer. And then he's talking about writing up the sale, actually setting up and putting uh, the, the, the negotiation process together, in closing the negotiation process, um, looks like he could go on and on and on. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, perfect. So it's it's exactly right. So we've 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 pretty much yeah, we've summated each other's uh, strategy um, there. So yeah, cool, bro. Um, you're. I just want to just just a shout out to uh, Logan. He said I'd like to thank you for your inspiration words over the last two months. You may not remember, but I asked advice about funding and now we're growing thanks to your input and how to approach to funding. So we're expanding into the Australian child welfare and indigenous rights space. Yes, love it, Logan. That's awesome, mate. That's such awesome feedback, brother. Um, man, jump into DMs and tell us more about the story. That'd be, that'd be I remember that, to him right? Really. It was like, um, you know, I run a pretty, pretty cool charity and stuff like that, and mm. like any, any tips on how to get funding. I remember your, your, uh, Oh, uh, your suggestion, story, didn't we? Yeah. <clears throat> your suggestion was really, really simple. It was really, really tactical, right? Um, and it was just, yeah, tell a good story. And he's got a good story, obviously. He's helping, you know, uh, disempowered children. Like, yeah, fuck, that's a good story. Yeah, massive. All right, bruv. So uh, we've got about six, seven minutes. Um, is there anything I'm else good. you want to touch on the process? No, look, I agree with Dion, man. And look, these, these words are really synonymous, guys. So what I'll say is, look, here's a basic process. You know, screenshot this, whatever. You know, cut me out. But um, yeah, you, know, <laughs> you don't want that face, um, face looking at you all the time. But it's pretty much these things, right? And you, you know what? You can Google this shit. But what I think it really did comes down to is how do you get good at building a relationship um, that creates mutually beneficial value for both parties? And yeah, you can read as much fucking ebooks as you want, but sooner or later, you got to get out there and test that shit because you've got your own style and your avatar or your market or your clients, or your prospects, they've got their own personality too. And so you've got to, over experience 
find out. Yeah, start with a reasonable framework um, to kind of go through, but man, you got to get out there and test it and develop it for you and, and be authentic. I 100% agree with that. But again, that comes right back to the intention behind the business or the product or the right. marketing. Just know that you want to improve people's lives, man, and just do that. I don't even need to teach you how to do that. Like, if you want to help your grandmother, fuck, I don't need to teach you how to do that. You don't need some process. You know, just fucking go and do that, right? Um, but yeah, this is good. And then what I'll say is also, you know, again, if you've got longer sales cycles, you just need to add in a, a CRM and you could just use a spreadsheet or pipe drive. You can use fucking okay. Trello. You can use a fucking oh, spreadsheet. Um, HubSpot, right? Um, you know, there's a million now. They just Google fucking CRM. Um, and what it does, because I think I heard read a stat, it was like something like, um, I think 98% of sales reps jump on a new lead when it comes in. Uh, but only 2%... Yeah, two, only 2% two follow up after the fourth attempt to contact. And that's just crazy. Yeah. You, you know, if you've qualified, because this is largely a qualification process, right? The whole thing of this is, can we work together to create a mutually beneficial situation? And, and um, <clears throat> if, if you've qualified them, man, you've got, you're, you're obligated because mm. you know you can help them. Like if they said, oh, yeah, no, nah, yeah, I've got elbow cancer. And you're like, oh, dude, I've got the cure for elbow cancer. They go, okay, I've got to go talk to my wife and my accountant. Can I get back to you in two weeks? What are you going to do? Are you, you going to let them go and die of elbow cancer because you couldn't follow up because you didn't have a spreadsheet? That's just stupid, man. You know, but again, that's where you're selling and you're not just trying to make money. You're actually trying to help people. So um, there's one one final thing that I'm going to leave on this topic. And, 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 and all okay, cool. Is, let's do a business update and yeah, then close. Yeah, yeah. So, so the... So, the, the final, all of this is brilliant and, and all of this framework is unreal. So the thing is that what you need to do is you need to get into the habit of breaking down your own process. So after you make a sale, spend 10 minutes and debrief yourself on what went well, how it worked and keep, keep refining your process because it's not knowing the process is one thing, but having actually felt and experienced the process and that experience of when you actually lose a sale can often teach you more than the experience of when you get a sale. Um, so just just build that in, build that into your your um your 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 processes, debriefing what you've done with yourself. So Jung, um, is it me or you this time? You all, you all, yep. Either. Love you, yeah, love you, Marilyn. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Like yeah, I don't want to miss that. That fucking so key. So many people miss that. So the, the Biz Squad Mastermind, um, we had a handful of applications from last week and we're probably just short of putting another group together. Is that right? Oh, look, here. Yeah. can I just link that to our current public? Yeah, yeah. Like, fuck, man, we don't, what do we sell? When do we try to fucking sell you this pen, sell you this mastermind, sell you this Biz Squad, mm -hmm. right? We just deliver a shitload of value, man, like as much as we can. What do we have in the first round of applications? Something like, 25 applicants to join our business squads, right? And yeah, they're free. Um, but still, again, we don't want to do business with people that aren't a great fit because yeah, we we can't help them and one, they won't get a good outcome anyway. So we've got to have these sales calls and have these qualification calls, which is generally like, hey, do you know what the hell a mastermind is? Are you gonna you really want to get the value out of it? Will you do the homework? Mm, okay, cool. Mm, Let's do this mm, thing. Mm, mm. You know, will you will, will you talk will you talk will you give us feedback about if it's awesome? Um, and will you tell other people about it? awesome right and so that's what we're doing right so it's a perfect example of kind of marketing crossover with sales um yeah, and if you're doing a good job branding and marketing fuck you don't need to do much sales. that's what i feel i feel like we're, we're certainly not in a, a a sales process with this thing but we're just saying hey th this thing's here we're putting some squads together if you want to get involved jump on if you don't well good keep watching the content and we'll keep trying to deliver as much value as we can each week and um man th that story um is just just blows me away i'm just so happy with that like that's that's unreal that's great Hey, which story with the with the charity? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's fucking awesome, man. It's fucking. Can I throw another thing up there, man? This is a real fucking spinner in the works, man. You know, so I know the guy that does. Well, I don't know him personally, but you know, I know of him and done a little bit of work with him. Is um the guy who does the best sales webinars in the world, right? Like all the big guns go like Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson. When they want to build webinars, they go and see this person. You go to his website, Jason Fladley. You go to his website, it's a piece of shit. Mm. All right? He doesn't do fuck all sales. and He's, one of the, he's the best webinar guy in the goddamn world. Um, you don't need salesmen. You know what he's done? He's, he's got strategic partnerships. Mm. 
So that, I, that's what I mean. I just like, shit, why are you guys asking for antibiotics? Maybe that's the problem if you tick all the other boxes. But man, show me your strategic partnership first. Yeah. You don't have to sell shit if the leads are just, the, not even the leads, the conversions are just coming to you. Yeah. I need your shit. I already know about your shit. My, your mate told, my mate told me about it. You're you know, full of shit. That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, yeah, sales is important, but not always. Hey, Cam's on. Cam? Scott? Cam. Yeah, Cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just messaged me before, but I couldn't reply because I was talking to you here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Biscots, yeah, Biscots. Basically, uh, we, we, we had a handful of people put their hands up last week. Um, of that, a few people filled out the forms. Um, we're so, so we're still looking for a couple of... Like, like 10 people, right? Is that a handful? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't... Fuck, my handhold. I couldn't hold, 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 the update anyway, but... Um, Basically, the, the, the invite is still there for anyone who is watching the call who wants to jump on to a high level, um, you know, fortnightly rhythm, jump in, let's discuss your business, discuss some outcomes, let's get some shit done and move you forward. That's it. Is Marilyn jumping in? Marilyn, jump in. Are you jumping in? Work it. Tim, Tim Webb. Dude, if you're still watching, man, let's do this thing, man. Like, I know you got a lot of value to add, right? Not only around sales, because you're gun around sales, but obviously marketing. And again, I think smart people usually move into marketing. Smart salespeople usually kind of move into marketing because it's just way more birds of fun. Yeah, let's go, Marilyn, because marketing, right? That's so cool. much value you can add to the group. Let's yeah. go. Cool. Um, yeah, no, nah, cool. Biz squads is all good. Yeah, that's what I'll say, man. Look, if you guys enjoy this, <clears throat> this is just a small taste, right? And it's rather than give you, again, hit us up if you want a framework. It's yeah, a pretty looking yeah, framework. We'll just inbox it to you. You can, yeah. It's there. Yeah, you got like a fucking ebook thing. If you want an ebook thing, you can tweak the fucking questions and shit and make it your own. It's a sales script, right? For lack of a better term. Right, yeah. Um, but you know what's even better than that, man? Is working with experts like Marilyn, like mm. Tim Webb, like Nick Hoyle uh, in, in a, on a regular basis to develop yours and find out what the real problems are. Because mm. it's not your script, man. It's not your framework. It's not your process, man. There's some other problems, right? It's your avatar, your marketing, your your approach to it you know, your genuinity, all that kind of stuff. And, and we'll pick that up in that group environment. So, uh, you know, get at us, and get in the group. One final closing thought from Jong and we out. Sales process. Don't try to coerce people. Just try to help people. Love it. All right, team. That's us. We'll see you next week.